In this Google Drawings lesson, we're going to explore a chemical reaction that you witnessed this semester. We're going to explore the reaction that occurs when you drop sodium metal into water and it violently reacts with the water to produce sodium hydroxide as a solution in the water and then on top of that explosive hydrogen gas that eventually is going to ignite from being released next to all the heat that's also being released from the reaction. It will ignite and then start on fire and explode. That's the reaction that we're going to be exploring. Now, the very first thing I'm gonna do, this chemical reaction equation does show the substances involved in the reaction. I need to add in places for me to put coefficients, for me to put the numbers that will eventually balance this equation. So first thing, I'm just going to add in those spaces for coefficients. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is this. Let's start this off not the way that you would start off when you're balancing an equation. Let's start off by looking at what the problem is. So again, what I'm gonna do first here is not what you would do if you were trying to balance this chemical equation. Instead, this is just gonna help you to understand why we need to balance this chemical equation in the first place. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the line shape tool, and I'm gonna draw a line between my reactants and my products. That's gonna allow me to keep things nice and separate on the screen so I know what I'm dealing with because I know that in the end, I have to have the same atoms in the reactant side as I do on the product side. But now, before I begin, I'm just going to make everything that's on the screen in the equation already. Normally, you would start by just making what's on the reactants side, but I'm just gonna make all of it just to show what the issue is. So let's see, I need to make a sodium atom. I'm gonna do that first by selecting this circle tool. I'm gonna to hold down the shift key on my keyboard as I make a circle. That's gonna make a perfect circle. I'm gonna make it nice and large. Uh, the alkali metals are colored light gray, so I'm just gonna color mine gray. Again, you don't have to have the colors right. Edit the text, write Na for sodium. I'm gonna make it bold so it stands out. I'm also going to center the text just so it looks good. There we go, I have a sodium atom. I also need to make an H2O molecule. So I'm gonna take my sodium atom, I'm gonna copy and paste it using Control C and Control V. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit because oxygen is a little smaller than sodium. And then I'm going to retype the letter, it's O for oxygen. And oxygen is actually red, so I'm gonna use a light red color to make my oxygen. Uh, I also need to make hydrogen, so copy, paste the oxygen, shrink it down even further, hold shift, grab the corner and shrink it. I'm gonna capital H for hydrogen. And hydrogen's usually white, but I'm gonna make it sort of a off-white color so it stands out. I'm gonna make it just a little smaller than this too because Hydrogen is the smallest atom on the periodic table of elements. Okay, I'm gonna move my hydrogen up because I need H2O, which has one oxygen and two hydrogens. So I'm gonna bond that together as H2O. Just notice that I know it's bonded together because it's one chemical formula within the chemical equation. It's H2O all together. So I know that that means there's two hydrogens and one oxygen bonded together. I also know that it's not bonded to the sodium atom because the sodium is a separate substance in the chemical equation and there's a plus between them. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm also right away just gonna make the substances that are on the right hand side. Let's make NaO. H, and again, you would not do this if you were um, just actually solving the chemical formula, but let's make NaOH, okay, and then H2, so I need actually two of these hydrogens. All right, now, here's the problem. As I count up the atoms on the left of this equation, and I have every single molecule in the equation made right here. As I count up the atoms on the left, let's see, I have one sodium on the left. Similarly, I have one sodium on the right. So the sodium is balanced, that's perfect. That's what we would hope for according to the law of conservation of mass. But let's look at the other things. I have two hydrogens on the reactant side, 
but I have three on the product side. And that can't be. An extra hydrogen just can't appear out of nowhere. That's not the way that matter works. And I have one oxygen on the reactant side and one oxygen on the product side. So everything balances except for hydrogen. But that's everything. That means everything for this chemical equation. If the hydrogen is not balanced, there's a big problem that needs to be fixed. We need to balance this equation. Now, let's do this the right way. I'm going to delete everything from the side for right now. Here's how you go about balancing these visually. We're going to make a copy of the exact things that are on the reactant side. And this is how it works. You are allowed to make extra copies of the things that are on the reactant side of the equation. Okay, so I'm going to do that with both of the original molecules because I know that these substances have to all move over to the other side. And I'm just going to take them and move them over. Please notice, I have the exact same atoms on the left as I do on the right. But here's what happens. During a chemical reaction, these substances break apart, the bonds release, and new bonds are going to form. One of the substances that's going to be made when the new bonds form is NaOH. So that's going to look like this. Here's sodium hydroxide. But I don't have another hydrogen that I need in order to make H2. I only have one hydrogen on the product side of this equation all by itself, and I can't just have a free extra hydrogen that's not in the chemical equation. I am allowed to have an H2, however, so I know I need more hydrogen atoms on that side. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a copy of the water molecule. Now, when I make a copy now, I have to leave one on the reactant side because I have to add the same thing to both sides. I started by adding both sodium and water to both sides. Now I'm going to add an extra water to both sides. So I have my water on the reactant side copy it, move it over to the product side where the bonds are going to break apart and new substances are going to form. In this case, I'm going to form an H2, but I still have an extra OH left over. Well, that shouldn't be a problem either because I can take this sodium atom and add one more of those to both sides. So I'm going to copy the sodium atom. I'm allowed to copy things on the reactant side. But then I have to also add one to the product side as well. And that's going to combine with the oxygen and the hydrogen. And now I have only the things that are in the chemical equation. I have sodium atoms. I have water molecules. I have sodium hydroxide. And I have hydrogen, H2 molecules. So this is what the balanced picture part of the equation looks like. And I'm just going to clean one thing up that I know is incorrect. Um, sodium hydroxide is actually an ionic substance with sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So just to make this look right, I'm going to move them into where their crystal lattice would be. And I'm going to add lattice lines to them just to make them look better. So we've got a vertical line there. This is going to be another vertical line. And then they're also going to have horizontal lattice lines connecting them. Select them all. To select multiple components, you can hold down Shift on your keyboard and just select them all at the same time. If you want to group something together, I'm going to group these lattice lines as a group. Control G groups them. And then I'm going to move these to the back. And now we have a sodium hydroxide crystal. The other thing that I know is true is that the sodium atoms are also going to make a crystal compound like metal atoms do. So I'm going to put some lattice lines around those as well. Okay, and then I simply hold down shift and select everything. And when I have everything selected, group it, control G, and send it to back. And there we have it. All right, this is the complete balanced chemical reaction between uh, sodium metal, water molecules, and then changing to sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. Now, I need to finish this up by putting uh, the coefficients in the equation at the top. 
So I have to just go back and count how many of each thing I have. So like, how many sodium metal atoms do I have in the crystal? Well, in order to make this equation work, I have to have two sodium atoms. How many water molecules do I have? Well, in order to make this work again, I need to have two water molecules. And then finally, how many sodium hydroxide crystal units do I have? Well, as I made that, I noticed I had two crystal units of sodium hydroxide. The hydrogen, H2, doesn't need a coefficient because there's only one of them. And when there's only one of something, you just leave it without a coefficient in the equation. This is the balanced reaction formula for combining sodium with water. One last thing to do, we need to go back and count all the atoms on each side to make sure there's the same number of atoms on the reactant side as there are on the product side. So in my sodium metal, I have two sodium atoms. On the other side, in the sodium hydroxide, I have two sodium atoms. So that's great. Sodium balances. Let's look at oxygen. I have two oxygens on the left and two oxygens on the right. Oxygen balances as well. What about the hydrogen? I have four hydrogens on the left and four on the right. This is a balanced chemical reaction formula.